We come now to the second church in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, which I believe to be symbolic of the 144,000 who will fall at the sixth trumpet when Satan appears as Antichrist, as you can see in Daniel chapter 11, verse 35, where it says, Some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. But as you can see in your Strong's Concordance, this word fall means to totter or waver, meaning they'll come out of the confusion when the the Holy Spirit speaks through the Zadok, repenting, then being able to take part in the first resurrection when the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet, when they'll be used to teach the people during the thousand years. You'll find them written of in Ezekiel 44, called there the Levites, and being teachers who are held to a higher standard of judgment, they shall bear their iniquity, as it's written in Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 12. And then if you go on to read verse 13, you'll find out they're not allowed to approach Christ until after the thousand years are finished. Only the Zadok, who are the 7,000, shall come near to Christ during the millennium, as you can see in verse 15. And I'm of the opinion that most of the Zadok are those who have lived and died throughout the centuries who will return with Christ at the seventh trumpet to live and reign with him a thousand years, along with those of the Zadok who are alive and remaining on earth at that time, along with the 144,000 serving as ministers, having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house, as it's written in Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 11. Smyrna being a type of fig that requires pollination in order to produce fruit. And the time frame of all seven letters to the seven churches is after Satan appears as Antichrist, and also after those of the Zadok were delivered up, which is when the Holy Spirit speaks through them, bringing many out of the confusion and back into God's family tree. Not just the 144,000 who are the first fruits of this second world age, as we know from Revelation chapter 14, but also whosoever chooses to hearken to the voice of the Holy Spirit when the seven thunders utter their voices. So with that having been said, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 8, with a word of wisdom from our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive, speaking to those who were dead spiritually, but were brought back to life by repenting and returning to the true Christ. You might think of the valley of dry bones written of in Ezekiel 37, where God says to Ezekiel in verse 4, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, verse 5 goes on to say, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And so it shall be when the 144,000 hear the Holy Spirit speaking through the Zadok, having been sealed in their foreheads with the truth of God's word beforehand, but it's not until they're activated by what the Holy Spirit says through the Zadok during the sixth trumpet that the seal of God springs forth in their minds, and they become part of the exceeding great army written of in Ezekiel chapter 37. Then they're delivered up also in the same sort of chain reaction you can read of in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit spake through the apostles on Pentecost Day, ten days after Christ ascended into heaven, and the many-membered body of the true Christ began to grow like wildfire. Verse 9, and remember this is after the Holy Spirit spake through the Zadok during the sixth trumpet and the 144,000 returned to the true Christ. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, spiritually speaking, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan, the evil figs written of in Jeremiah 24, the Kenites who are the natural branches of Satan's family tree, whereas the good figs of Jeremiah 24 or those who are part of God's family tree, the many-membered body of the true Christ, at the seventh trumpet when the true Christ returns, the 144,000 and the Zadok and whosoever will, both the natural branches and those grafted in, because all are one in the true Christ. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Notice this is yet future according to the time frame here. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried. And remember it was also written in Daniel 11.35 that some of them of understanding shall fall, which means to totter or waver, to try them and purge them and make them white. And ye shall have tribulation ten days, which harkens back to the book of Acts where it began with the twelve apostles who were of the twenty-four elders, which is part of the Zadok, and grew from there. And the wavering of the 144,000 in this generation before they finally come out of the confusion because of what the Holy Spirit will 
say could very well be caused by not understanding exactly who the Kenites are. And if you read Ezekiel 44 verses 6, 7, and 8 with understanding, you can see that the deception that led to the apostasia was primarily caused by the natural branches of Satan's family tree. That's why we need to know and understand who the Kenites are, whereby we're not deceived. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life at the first resurrection, and after the thousand years are finished, the 144,000 will be without fault before the throne of God, as you can see in Revelation chapter 14, verse 5, because again, being teachers, they're held to a higher standard of judgment, as we know from James chapter 3, verse 1, because they ministered unto them before their idols and caused the house of Israel, which is all of Christianity, to fall into iniquity at the sixth trumpet when the apostasia will occur. Therefore have I, God Almighty, that is to say, lifted up mine hand against them, saith the Lord God, and they shall bear their iniquity, as it's written in Ezekiel 44, verse 12. And he goes on to say in verse 13, And they shall not come near unto me to do the office of priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place, but they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed. And this was all caused by their actions in the first world age when Satan first rebelled. But after the thousand years are finished, you see that great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, standing before the throne at the great white throne judgment and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, as you can see in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. These are they which came out of great tribulation, which is the thousand years that immediately follows Satan's tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, Christ Jesus, that is to say, as it's written in verse 14 of Revelation chapter 7, because of Christ's teaching during the millennium through the Zadok and by extension the 144,000 in the same pattern given with the feeding of the 5,000 that you can read of in the Gospels, they absorbed the discipline whereby they stood against Satan after the thousand years were finished, taking part in the second resurrection into eternal life, being grafted back into God's family tree and therefore going into the third world age, which is the eternity. So Ezekiel 37 continues on up to that time, ultimately, which is why it says in verse 11, these bones are the whole house of Israel, the many-membered body of the true Christ, Abraham's seed. Because if you're not in Christ Jesus, when the great white throne judgment occurs, you're not going into the eternity, you're going into the lake of fire. All Israel will be saved, though, because Israel is the many-membered body of the true Christ, regardless of their ethnicity. They which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, not if they don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they're not, but the children of promise are counted for the seed, as it's written in Romans chapter 9, verse 8. Abraham's seed being Christ, and if you're in Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, the promise of eternal life, if and only if you believe upon the only begotten Son of God. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be heard of the second death. <laughs>